Welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at West Vault. And today I got a comment um, on YouTube today by a subscriber, I think you're a subscriber, called Bobby Ann. And um, in this case, what Bobby was talking about was um, he or she hates um, the syntax of PHP, right? He says it's the, the inconsistent, it's a little bit outdated, some things are not flowing very well. And this has caused a little bit of grief, a little bit of um, OCD, you know, especially with languages. And you get this criticism from a lot of other people talking about the PHP language, right? Especially those people coming from other uh, software backgrounds, other language backgrounds. And what I want to do today, right, is just clarify a few points and give you a couple of tips on how you this uh, OCD when you don't like the way a syntax looks like. So, First of all, what's wrong with the language, right? So one of the main things is that it has this code called inconsistent syntax, all right? So you've got some language uh, functions that have camel case and some functions that, you know, are named differently. Um, you know, I'll put out a couple over here. Now, the reason is that uh, this PHP is a 15 year old language and it was three days in the language. So of course, as the web was evolving, best practices were being used, best ideas were being used, and you know, new ways of naming stuff and consistencies start happening over a 15, 20 year language. You gotta remember this thing's been around since the 90s. Now, there's nothing wrong with this kind of language. Remember that a lot of languages have this kind of backward compliance kind of issue. It's just because of the speed of how fast a language is moving. Now, what may have been a good idea in the 90s, like bell-bottom uh, jeans may not be a good idea in the 2000s and the 2020s, right? Now, don't get too upset about this kind of stuff because every language goes through this kind of stuff. If you want to talk about that, talk about the front-end languages. Gee, you know, JavaScript just can't make up its mind what exactly it wants to do, can't make up its mind how it exactly wants to do that. So, don't be too hard on PHP. The second thing is the notation, right? Uh, you got this and then self has no dollar sign on top, a special character. Now, there is a reason for this one. I'll just explain it. This is actually a instance, whereas self is a self-referencing. There's no object being created. But I get what you're trying to say in terms of how languages look, in terms of the uh, identifying and the notation. Now bear in mind, these people usually come from some other language and when you look at it coming from another language, everything looks weird. It's kind of like when you're driving on the left side of the road and you start driving on the right side of the road, you start realizing that, you know, there's a lot of dumb stuff why you should be driving on the right hand side. Vice versa, the guys on the right hand side find it really weird. The reason is that certain notations have been taken up already. Like for example, in PHP, we use the dot to concat stuff. I think this is pretty obvious because dot is kind of like a sentence. We're adding two sentences together. The plus, on the other hand, for JavaScript, I have an issue in it. Like you're not really adding two strings together. Like what does an add do if it was numbers? Somewhere along the line, somebody used that notation and it can't be used again. And either language is gonna have this kind of stuff. So these are the two things. Now, bear in mind that PHP is always evolving. It's been evolving since seven, and they've really looked into a lot of notation, uh, the double question marks, all this kind of stuff usually coming up. For a language to move really quickly, there has to be a few things. One, you have to be able to uh, add features, and number two, you have to be backward compliant. This is, it would be terrible. Imagine if the new PlayStation 5, right, and all my PlayStation 4 games are not uh, usable. You can get very low take up rates. So backward compliance, yes, a little bit crazy with the functions, but it's very important to move the language forward, especially seven and then now eight in the new cycle. Now, that being said, how do you deal with this stuff, right? Now, the first one is um, rename your functions, build your own functions, okay? So for example, you hate a sort, you hate s sort, you hate k sort, okay? Write yourself a component class, call it whatever you want. So here's an example, my awesome class. I called some functions my own name if I felt I wanted to use it. 
no problem. You know, you want to make it consistent with another language you're used to, bring that component class over. There's nothing stopping you from renaming functions as long as there's nothing, no, cla no clashing within the, the framework. And if you write your own, ob uh, your own object, your own class, you can do that for the entire whatever function that you hate. Number two, all right. Number two, just live with it, okay? Have a coffee, have a coffee, chill down and accept that the function is going to be like that, okay? And then get yourself a good IDE. What am I talking about? These days, we have a lot of um, IDEs, development environment, uh, interactive development environments that can prompt you and give you hints on how exactly to write this stuff, right? Visual basic, uh, sorry, visual code, uh, uh, what I'm using, PHP Storm. There's lots of these good IDEs that can search out what self is, what dollar sign is, what syntax are, especially the function names, and they can easily help you. So while you're coding in that language, you have these functions, uh, these IDEs to help you out, actually write out your own code. So what I would advise you to do, if you really got that issue, download Visual Code uh, VS, go get uh, what you call Visual Studios, go get that IDE, help yourself out so you don't have to remember those functions. And the third reason, the third point is, a lot of people beginning PHP usually do it on the core, the core code on PHP itself, just writing out the functions. It gets a lot better if you use a framework. There's a third tip. Frameworks have been designed to make things a lot easier for you and they know about these problems. For example, in E2, we have an array uh, component, components like a class, that helps you do array transformations and manipulations. The syntax is a lot better than the plain old uh, PHP, and it's a lot easier, a lot more, uh, like we have array map, we have a certain amount of these functions, the 2D or 3D manipulations that are not available. Use these component classes that come from the framework. And you'll see that in Laravel, you see that in Symfony, everybody is aware of these things if they've done their own version to sort of make it a lot easier. In fact, I am seldom, uh, probably haven't done very many array functions ever since I used the PHP E2 framework. And these three tips will help get you to the promised land, enjoying PHP coding it out much more faster. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.